Hello everyone, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CBPNet video series on STL algorithm series and this is the second video of this series and this is about sorting in STL algorithm. So I just forgot algorithm. So it's actually the similar function what we know but I would like to say few more things about this function which is really very important. So I mean how it can be handled because we have parallel processing meaning multi-threaded way of sorting is also available into the STL algorithm which so many people don't know. So watch this video till the end and I'm sure it will benefit you. So first point is in C++ STL we have sort function which can sort in increasing and decreasing order. It's up to us what order we want to give and second point is not only integral but user defined data type can be sorted using this function. So I have these four different types of sorting meaning uh, we'll use the same sort function but we will use different different functions and different different data types to actually have so many aspects of the same functions to be covered and this is very important point oh i just messed with the number here so this should be two this is three and this is your four yeah so the second point is very important internally it uses intro sort this is really very important point so many people don't know this let me explain this very quickly actually whenever you do this sort there is not only one sort function like quick sort or something underneath no there are different sorting algorithms and what type of data you feed and what are the circumstances it picks the right sorting algorithms and sort your data so internally it uses intro sort intro sort is a combination of quick sort heap sort and insertion sort so by default it uses quick sort but if quick sort is doing unfair partitioning and taking more time than n log n time it switches to the heap sort and when the array size becomes really small it switches to the insertion sort. So you can see that it uses quick sort, heap sort and insertion sort and quick sort can be used at the first time but if it is not doing correct partitioning and the complexity is going more than n log n it will switch to the heap sort and if your array is literally very small it will go ahead with the insertion sort no need to create heap and all that so internally it does this checking so many people don't know this and the last point is we can use parallel execution policy for better performance this i bet would blow your mind that you just have to pass only one parameter like this you just have to say that sort this vector from this place to this place meaning you have to give the start and end of the vector and then say that I want to implement a parallel execution of this process meaning how many cores you have it will try to utilize that many cores. So this is the best part you do not have to do any multi-threaded coding in, in order to achieve a very good result it already is available you just have to use it. Now there are some situation where you cannot use this I mean if you have data race or some things because there are so many algorithms provided in your algorithm section of STL so it's not like in all the algorithms you can do this parallel but there are so many algorithms where you can do the parallel processing so I will create a separate video for this parallel processing I will not talk about this parallel processing much but I am bringing this parallel processing into this video so that people should be knowing if they want they can use this parallel processing for sorting and it will be really very fast. Right now I don't have much data if you have so much of data you can use it and you will be shocked by the result. <laughs> okay so we are done with these points here let's look at the first type of sorting I mean you will use integral data type like 1 2 3 4 5 6 what is this data type so we have this vector here it's very simple that you will say that okay sort and you will pass the start and end and it will sort this and let's see the result and I'll just simply compile it and execute it see it is saying 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 oh 10 is not there okay so it is sorted we have checked it this is very trivial this is very important user defined data types meaning you have some collection of your objects and depending on something on some parameter in your class you want to sort all those objects in your array or vector or whatever so how we'll do that so let me just simply comment this and let's look at that 
Hey guys, it's time for a quick pause and what you're seeing right now is my Patreon page. So if you don't know what is Patreon, it's a crowdfunding website where you can support any content creator like me and in return, you get rewards. So if you join me, I can be your private tutor or you just want to chat with me and ask your doubts or maybe you just want to support me with very small amount and I'll still have something for you. So do visit my Patreon page and see if you like it. And if you want to discontinue anytime, you can do that. So if you have already visited my Patreon page, let's continue our video now. So this is your point, a user defined data type here. And see, I have just simply used this less than operator overloading facility because you know what sort is not doing anything sort is comparing one element with another element right so comparing meaning it is taking one element and using this less than operator and after that it is using another element so it's like a less than b and that a is actually the object of this point and b is also the object of the point so i have overloaded that operator so that once this sort function internally doing one object less than another object that would internally call this function here and the logic to sort i have used is like x and y should be added and checked whether the addition of both x and y is less than the addition of the x and y of another object meaning if this one and two is there and then three and one so addition of one and two will be three and three and one will be four so this is less than this so this will come first so let's run this and see the result if it is doing the same job here. So I'll compile this and execute this. Uh oh, <laughs> I just forgot to save this. Oh my God. Okay, compiled and execute this. Yeah, now see. <laughs> okay, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 3 ones. Because the addition of 0, 1 is 1. So this object should be first in the vector, whereas currently it is in the last position. But after sorting, it has, it has come to the first position. Okay, so this is how you will do it if you have some user defined data type. I mean, this is one of the way. So let's look at the third way. We have sort using the function object. Let's see how that looks like. So this is one of the way it is called using a function object. Its syntax is like this. You will use operator, this round brackets, and you'll pass this custom less as a pointer here. So it will try to call this with the round brackets like this. Oh, oh, I just messed like this. Okay. So when it will call it with these round brackets, it will end up calling this one. So as you can see that here also, we are doing the same thing, not doing anything extra here. Let me save this and execute this compile. Okay. Oh, sorry. I just have to remove this. It was for the example, save it, compile this, execute this and see one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine. So this is sorting using this function object. So let's quickly comment this and see the last one, which is about my favorite. I mean, I've been working on angular. So now I use this Lambda so much. So. This is also one of the way you will directly inject the function itself where you was using this custom less object. Okay. So you can directly use that function body here. See the signature is exactly same. See integer a, b and return a less than b. See it's exactly the same. It's just that you are using a lambda expression, not anything else. And let's save this guy and compile and execute. See, this is also sorting it. So now you might be wondering, how to sort it in descending order. I'll show you that. You just have to pass std greater integer this syntax. So this will tell that, okay, you are looking for a descending order sort. So let's compile this and execute this. See, it is in descending order sorted. And for ascending, it's optional, but you can give this less. So if you will give less here, meaning less than operator to be used for sorting. Now it is ascending order sort. So less and greater. Just remember this much. So let me comment this and tell you one more thing, which is exactly what I said in the beginning. This 
execution and parallel there are four types of execution strategy which i will explain in some another videos and if you can you try this with so many data i mean you have to randomly generate so much of data and feed that data into your sorting algorithm and see what is the result and let me know if you see so much big improvement so we'll sum this video thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next videos bye bye take care